welcome to another video from the Tiny Menagerie! If there is a fish that people tend to say, what is that, when they spot it in my tank, it would be the rather curious looking coolie loach. These eel-like fish with their tiger stripes, a face full of whiskers and a lack of scales certainly stand out as a bit of an oddball, but they are also seriously cute. And even people scared of slithery things in general, like snakes, must surely see the appeal of this little face with its adorable star of barbels on its nose. Or maybe that's just me. But what are coolie loaches like to keep and what kind of setup do they need? Well, coolies originate from the southeastern areas of Asia, particularly around Thailand and Singapore, where they inhabit murky or clear slow flowing waters, often heavily vegetated along the banks and with a sandy or muddy substrate. There they live in large groups with many hundreds of individuals all together, and they are mostly active from dusk until dawn. In the home aquarium though, they can be seen during the day so long as they are comfortable to be out and about, and to facilitate this you will need to keep them in a group with at least four individuals. While they don't necessarily shoal together, they do feel more at ease having more of their own kind around. Luckily though, even though you need to keep them in numbers and they can grow up to four inches in length, being so slim, they actually don't need a great deal of space, and a group can be kept comfortably in a tank with a minimum base dimensions of 80 by 30 centimeters. And you only have to take one look at these little guys to know exactly what kind of tank they are going to enjoy. These little fish are the perfect shape for squeezing through tiny gaps and weaseling their way around a tank, using those sensitive barbels to find little scraps of something to eat. They do prefer hardscape over plants, and so their tank needs to have lots of rock piles, chunky bits of wood, anything they can get under and around. Then you will often see them emerging from the shadows to mooch around on the substrate before going back again. And this is actually quite unusual behaviour for bottom dwelling fish, who tend to just be snuffling along mindlessly like Cory's. That makes the coolie loach a fascinating one to watch, they really draw your attention when you spot them down in the undergrowth. And just to point out, you don't have to have the stripy variety of coolie loaches like mine, they also come in solid black and you can even get ones with a leopard like patterning. But certainly the most common one that you see, and definitely in my area, is the stripy variety. No matter which one you choose though, they all grow to roughly the same size and have exactly the same care. Now, when it comes to tank conditions, coolie loaches can be rather picky, as they are very prone to fluctuations in pH and also very prone to stress. And so while they can live in a wide variety of temperatures ranging from 24 to 30 degrees, the pH of the tank needs to be much more stable and stay as close to 6.5 as you can get it. And so that does mean coolie loaches are definitely not suitable at all for new tanks that are still going through the cycling phases. They need a mature setup that stays nice and stable. And luckily as well, as the tank only needs to have a slightly acidic pH at 6.5, this is easily achieved just by having plenty of wood in there that releases tannins, such as mapani wood for example. And once you have the tank set up, try not to make any dramatic changes very frequently, as this will stress the coolies out and potentially cause that pH to swing. And a sure sign that them not being very happy is yo-yoing. This is where coolies constantly swim up and down the sides of the glass. If they're doing this, then you know that they are not happy about something in your tank, but they will calm down, usually after about a day or so, so long as the tank conditions are suitable for them. A happy coolie though is one that is either on the substrate, hidden away, or possibly resting on a random leaf. Now, I have heard of people's coolie loaches burrowing into soft substrate like very fine sand. Personally, this is something I've never experienced, as my tanks always have a lot of hiding places in them, and it's much easier for a coolie to escape by swimming rather than trying to bury themselves. And hiding so much you never see them is a constant complaint about the species. If you have a very open tank, for example, or perhaps it has scary inhabitants in there, then you will likely find your coolies become fully nocturnal and you will never see them. As mentioned, they are very prone to stress, and so they will do all that they can to avoid it, including staying out of sight if they feel threatened in any way at all. When it comes to tank mates then, coolie loaches are about as soft and as gentle as you are going to find. They have truly awful eyesight and rely completely on their very sensitive barbels and their shape to allow them to seek out food in places where it's gotten trapped around the hardscape. 
They certainly don't hunt, and they have no interest at all in other fish. In fact, they wouldn't be able to nip a fin even if they wanted to, because they wouldn't be able to see it very well. And so, they are perfectly safe to have with even the slowest, softest finned fishes out there, or even those which are really, really tiny. They are a true community species. Just to point out as well, though, that they can see light, dark, and movements. And so they will flee if a big shadow or something passes over the top of them. They are also very snackable to a large fish, a bit like wriggly spaghetti, I suppose, and they will be readily eaten up by anything predatory, so be sure to only keep them with other community fish. They are also perfectly safe to keep with shrimps, and even the tiniest little shrimplet will simply move aside if a coolie happens to come too close. And because of their very poor eye scent and being ground dwelling, coolies are one of the very few species that can actually be kept safely with fry. Although they would certainly eat any eggs that they came across, so maybe spawn the fry in a separate tank. When it comes to feeding your coolies, there are two things you really need to bear in mind. One is that they can only feed from the bottom of the tank. They can't swim up for food very effectively at all, as they can't see the food, and they rely on blundering into something, or slowly hunting it out by scent using those barbels. Though don't get me wrong, they will sometimes try to feed from the surface, especially if they're hungry, they're just not very effective at it. This being the case, they do need a specialist sinking food that will fall down to where they can reach it before other fish grab it along the way. This can be algae wafers, sinking pellets, or mine really enjoy the tetra crusta menu that's meant for shrimps. And although they will certainly eat any uneaten food from the fishes above, it's not a good idea to rely on this alone, and so make sure you are target feeding them at least once per week. And why only once, you may ask? Well, that's because of the other thing you need to bear in mind, and that is that coolie loaches are very prone to becoming rather chubby. Given half a chance, these little fish can end up looking more like a cumbersome, stripy sausage rather than a nice, slick eel. And this is certainly not good for them, it can lead to bloating, which can then be fatal. When in spawning condition, females will develop a wider underbelly, but this should be even and run right the way along the base. A fat coolie is chubby everywhere, in which case you will need to put them on a diet. But overall, the coolie loach is an easy species to look after, so long as you have their tank set up correctly for them. Aim for a slightly acidic pH, lots of shadowy places, and they should be happy. Anywho, I hope you've enjoyed this little video all about coolie loaches. Happy fish keeping everyone, and I will see you again soon. Bye bye!